Hey guys, it's a History Nerd, and we're here with the last episode of Donuts' is Wet Dream, and the keen-eyed observer out you out there might be looking and saying, "Where are where are your U-boats, History Nerd? They went away." Yes, they did. Um, I feel like I've shown pretty much all there is to see with this game, except for one thing, kind of the main thing: um, surface combat, and um, I mean, obviously, utilizing the U-boats don't really. They don't really use the surface because they're they're submersibles. So let's go to the shipyard. We have 363,855 renown. I say it's time to buy ourselves some ships. So let's see what we've got available. Unfortunately, it's still a bit too early, so we can't get things like the Bismarck or the the Hutton. But we can get ourselves uh, a Sharnhorst. We could get ourselves two Sharnhorsts. Why not? So let's do that. Yep. And yep. There we go. Okay. And then what do we want? We don't want any more submarines. Uh, maybe... A Grafsby? That might not... Yeah, you know, we could, we could probably go with one of those. There we go. Uh, what else do we want? We could probably get a Hipper as well. Why not? Um, I don't know how many cruisers, like light cruisers, we necessarily want. We might as well get the Leipzig and the Nuremberg here. Why not? Uh, how are we doing? We still got 100,000 left. And then, I guess, we'd probably want some destroyers in there as well. Um, I guess that, uh, this would be the best bet. So let's go for three of these guys. One, uh, two, and three. Anton Schmidt, final. <clears throat> like there's a, a mob, it's probably mobilized, and it's crappy. Um, all right, well, because we can't get any of those guys in, let's get a couple more cruisers in. All right, yeah, that seems like a good idea. Uh, why not, why not these guys too? We can't get the Prince Eugene. That's okay. We'll throw in, uh, the Konisberg. That's our final little fleet makeup thing. So let's take a look at the, uh, German Navy here. Head out back. We got 13 ships. That is, that's, that's not too bad. Let's go track down some Royal Navy fun here, shall we? We can't move with you two? Why not? Why are you two specifically no? I, I don't understand. It's fine. England. There we go. Next turn. What do we run into? Uh, the King George V, the Hood, and then a couple of destroyers. That's with the cruiser and a destroyer. Oh, I don't know. Let's see what's going to happen here. Where are the bastards? Probably, that's them over there. Right. So, what we would want to do here is a bit of a starboard turn. And, how far out? Probably a bit too far for torpedoes, I'm going to guess. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately uh, the way I've got my recording set up screen is my microphone's right in front of the screen I'm out of desk space okay we can do this no that is just, just much too far um I mean I guess if we focused in on the destroyer here 16.8 uh, we can drop that down just just a tad You know what? I'll take it. And then our destroyer here. Can we get a lucky shot off too? 23.7 you tell me. 5, 6, 7. Oh, well, there we go. 23.7. Nada. Boo. 
Now I fully expect this cruiser and, and um, transport to get just slaughtered here. It would have been nice to have the main fleet engage, obviously, because then we'd be we'd be decimating this battleship. What can you do? There's not much you can do in situations like this. I mean, really, the only benefit so far is we've hit them once, and they haven't hit us at all. Ha <laughs> ha. <clears throat> so we can keep working down that destroyer, and I think that, yeah, I mean, you know, that might as well be what we go for here. We can get a kill, right? And at least that's a kill. Um, 19? That's a bit of a ways to count that down. It's just awkward having to turn my head. Which is really my own fault for having things set up this way. Oh, boo, come on. Work better, German Navy. You guys work better as U-boats, that's for sure. But no, the actual surface combat in this game is um, it's one of the strengths of this game. And, and you know, ideally this would be the focus of the game. Uh, it just so happens that in the Atlantic campaign, it kind of isn't the focus. Um, but, I mean, it, it depends on the way you play, right? And as, you know, like a Royal Navy commander then, yeah, okay, it's going to be a bit more um, surface fleet heavy. But just from the gameplay design and the way everything goes together, I don't know why you would ever not just do a whole schwack of U-boats. They're cheap, uh, they're easy to replace, and they're highly highly effective um you know like 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 i've said in one of my i just want to sink a destroyer here guys come on in one of my uh royal navy campaigns um you can be doing exceptionally well as the royal navy and still have devastating losses happen that you can't recover from. Now, I'm fine having a battleship get one hit killed by a torpedo from a submarine. That's life. Don't have the only way for me to replace that battleship be dependent upon the class and amount of ships that I sink when all you give me to sink are the cheap U-boats that are going to get me between 800 and 1,000 renown, and I need, like, 60,000 for a battleship. That's that's why the U-boat is such an effective strategy because you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter how many of them you lose, chances are you're going to be able to replace them no problem. Right? Like This is where, for, for surface engagements, uh, if you could guarantee that it was just going to be surface ships in the Battle of Atlantic, then um, that's not much of a Battle of Atlantic. And that's the trick, right? Is that you've got to figure out a way to work in these tiny little torpedo boats that are incredibly effective. But our whole, like, the whole design principle behind them is to be cheap and quick and, like, easy to mass produce um, to go up against, you know, the, the queens of the sea, the battleship. Something that, that a nation of the time, and even, even more so slightly before, like, this is, this is more going into the late 19th century imperialism with the ties between nations and their battleships and, and how they got, you know 
became national symbols of pride and, and like, he wanted the biggest, baddest, best battleship out there um, by, by World War II. That's like, well, that's dumb. These things don't work. But from a gameplay perspective, there's, there's just really no reason not to. Um... Did we? Oh no, he's still kicking. 17. We can bump that up to 17. Let's give it a fire. Nada. Boo. Come on, guys. Um, how close are you, anyway? I wonder. I wonder if we could get away with just, like, a blind torpedo spread here. I probably should have been positioning my destroyer for that... Uh, all along, well, it says that we're in range here. So if we look at the hood, you're telling me 57.1 is where we want these things aimed. And you're also telling me that we're out of range? Boo. That's not fun. All right. Focus in on that destroyer. 19.9. We'll just get there by jiggling a couple of keys. Oh, come on. Boo! Hmm. You know what? I'm thinking, at the start of my next turn, we're just gonna scuttle these ships. Because really, we don't have much of a chance of winning. And this is just... This is just eating time. <laughs> Come on. I just want to get the the big grand fleet out to go British hunting. Scuttle those ships. There we go. All right, <clears throat> well, you know, if we just sit in England, eventually they should come for us. Uh, light damage from allied aircraft. I mean, that is going to be the little uh, caveat here. Well, we'll wait one more turn, because the Grand Fleet should be coming for us. Mm, not so much. All right. Well, I don't necessarily want to just lose all these ships to aircraft. Why didn't you move, Schmidt? Come on. There we go. Uh, these guys are probably going to take forever to repair, right? Nine turns? My god. All right. The Sharn Horse has been damaged, which sucks a big one. I don't necessarily want to spend 12 weeks here waiting for that thing to get repaired. There we go! Why is it just... Oh, because I'm not in control of the King George. That's the enemy! <laughs> the proud German battleship, King George V. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's find this sucker. Where are you at, Georgie boy? Uh, presumably that's him over there, I think. That's him there. All right, well, I mean, he's coming right for us. I appreciate that. A little turn to port, just to get more of our guns to bear, I guess. And we're looking at a 12.6 elevation. Uh, there we go. Let's let these armor piercing shells loose. That's okay. That was the first barrage of the day. We'll let it slide. Get another nice little move to port here. Select the King George, and we're looking at a 14.1. Yeah, how's that looking? 37. That's nowhere near. I have no idea if the recording blinked out there. I may have been hammering the record button instead of the button I needed to press to adjust. Elevation. Regardless, we'll fix it in post. 
And by that, I mean the light is still red, or the, the little indicator is still red. So that means I am indeed recording. That's all that matters now. Uh, 20.4. There we go. And fire. We are all over the map today, gentlemen. Aim better. Uh, I guess what we could do here, because we don't necessarily just need to have a gigantic column rushing towards the entire time. That's the... All right. We'll get a bit of a standard or a starboard turn in here. And we'll get... Um, there we go. 16.9. <laughs> And uh, weigh that up to nine. There we go. And fire. Come on, guys. I mean, I realize uh, <laughs> from the perspective of the game that I've been playing, we've taken entirely people trained specifically in U-boats and just U-boats for a very long time. <laughs> somehow managed to get surface ships built up this quickly and have now pressed everyone into service telling them to work deck guns and things of that nature. It's craziness. But this craziness might just bring us the victory in war that we need. Come on, just a hit. Just a hit. Uh, you're looking more like a port maneuver here to avoid everyone else. Uh, 17.2. Oh, too far. Too far. So yeah, obviously, it's the surface combat where this game shines. And it's just unfortunate that the structure of the campaign itself kind of leads you to design fleets away from having a good, strong surface fleet and more towards, um, you know, as the Germans, submarines, and as the British, whatever the hell we can throw up to go against submarines, and don't ever put expensive ships anywhere, um, because if they get sunk in a hit, there's no recovery from them. And now, obviously, no recovery is a bit of an exaggeration, and I will concede that point in that just one hit, guys. You know, you can sink. Like, the Germans will have um, surface fleets. Like, they do have surface vessels that you can attack. It's just, for the most part, you're going to be dealing with one or two submarines. Um that pop up incredibly close to your starting location. You can probably, let's see, 30 is our stream range. I doubt these guys are at 30. And it would have been nice if I could have had the option to, like, let's take a look at our fleet here. And we know the King George is here, and so my two destroyers are way on the other side of the entire column. So these two ships are officially useless. Um, they're out of range, and I can't, I can't do anything with them. Without being able to set up a formation, it makes things just a little bit difficult. And, I mean, to be honest, while I'm just spitballing ideas here, um... Setting up a formation could certainly help the, uh, oh my god, come on. Uh, setting up a formation could certainly help with some of the problems with, um, oh yeah, that's looking good. What kind of bomber are you? Are you just a level bomber? <laughs> Look at that. That was actually 
I was I'm pretty pleased with that bombing run. That was a perfect bombing run. Well done. <laughs> Zoom in, watch this guy sink. Just, just, come on, let me get under the, come on, under the water. Huh. I just wanted to see you go under. Oh, well. That's that. And, and like I say, I mean, you know, 38,000 renowned for sinking a battleship. That's a fairly good reward. Although, again, you're not replacing a battleship with a battleship. Um, obviously. Let's go into the shipyard. Right? And, like, so for the 30, what was it, 38,000? Oops, we're going the wrong way. Uh, we could get ourselves... So we couldn't get ourselves a Sharnhorst, but we could get ourselves a replacement. Uh, probably the heavy cruiser Prince Eugene class, or the Hipper class. So, you know, I'm not expecting um, full replacements to happen, mind you. It's just... <clears throat> It's just in the campaign view, there's the it just feels like there's two ways to go about doing it. The way that will get you far too much renown, and the way that will get you almost none. And there's just no real balance in between. Like, for instance, um you know, the whole objective here is for Germany to get this bar down to red, or all red, and for Britain to prevent that from happening. And so there should be rewards for Britain for keeping the the supply lines open, which you would assume would give you things like access to materials to build ships. But um, there isn't. So so this is why this is why the the British campaign with this game won't be happening. And this is why I'm ending the German one because it's just gonna be what are we at now? February, the second week of nineteen forty. And I did some adjusting, some off screen work to get all the U boats home and out. So we got five more years of the same thing over and over again until we win. That's that's it. It's just it's going to be the same battles until we win. If we go with the surface fleet, you know, you can easily get yourself in the third week in November into a position where you don't have a fleet anymore. At least not a, a substantial decent fleet. To go after the heavy cruisers and the battleships because the submarines have picked clean your big fat ships and you've got no way to rebuild even more destroyers so that's why that's going to be it for this game now i've torn this game <laughs> apart today i guess um one thing i will say if you don't go for the battle of the atlantic if you just go for the campaigns for instance um Let's take a look. You've got 50 uh, surface engagements for both nations. And then you've got single battles, which you've got 30 of those. And these are like historic battles, right? So hunting the Western approaches. German destroyers sortie out to hunt convoys off the coast of Brest when spotted by a British air patrol. The convoys are diverted and Force F is rapidly mobilized to intercept so you can see we got a little bit of historical situations of what went down and those are really good the tutorials are pretty good it's just sadly the battle of the atlantic which i was excited for um but you can't you can't expect all things to be amazing in a ten dollar game i think what this game offers is great and i think it's a fun little a fun little, you know, time waster. And there's, it's, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a very good way. You want to sit down and fight a surface battle or two? Go nuts if you can, and it's great. It's just, um, when it comes to the campaign, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I, I hate to throw around, around terms like it's poorly designed, because I'm not a game designer. I don't know. I certainly play a lot of games, and it just seems like, strategically, it's, it's a little flawed. If there was, and all you need to do is just make sure that Britain can maybe not 
go nuts with the big ships. Like, sure, I've been talking a lot about one-shotting a battleship, and that is devastating, but you, you know, you don't have to necessarily go and build another battleship. It would be nice to just be able to build cruisers. Because, I mean, if we take a look... Well, let's load it up, shall we? Continue my Royal Navy campaign. So here's where I'm at. In my Royal Navy campaign, you can see that it is December of 1939, and I've got basically, uh, basically enough c patrols out here. So most of my patrols, uh, in this case, just two destroyers, that is not what I want. I've got to get the cruiser that's assigned with these two destroyers back, because she's taken some damage and I don't necessarily want her to die. Um, but, you know, that's basically what these... Are. So I've got my two submarines up in the north because they're not doing anything. Um, I've got my destroyer and cruiser patrols. And at this stage in the game, that's pretty much it. If we go take a look at my shipyard, I've got a battle cruiser and an Achilles on repair. We do have a, I mean, it is a relatively large fleet, but it's slowly getting chipped away. And if we take a look at my shipyard, I've got 36,000 renown. So that is enough to, you know, get ourselves, well, not quite a battle cruiser or an aircraft carrier. But we can, we could get ourselves a, uh, a single heavy cruiser or we could, you know, go for maybe a light cruiser and maybe another destroyer. But the, the thing is, when you win a battle, you get 800 renown or 1,000 renown. So, like, if we take a look, 800, 800 to 1,000 per U-boat, and you usually encounter one or two. The second one generally will run away. Sometimes you'll sink them. But we're, best case scenario, you're looking at, like, 2,500 renown per battle. And in that case, it's going to take, you know... 10 battles, 10 victories, 10 best case scenario victories to get ourselves a light cruiser. Now, in those 10 battles, you will probably have your ships destroyed because there's no real good defense against the, the, the initial shot of the submarine. If they go on turn one and they get spawn in close enough, you can potentially kiss whatever target they're shooting at goodbye with no real recourse. And from a gameplay perspective, I really don't have a problem with that. I like that idea. The fact that, you know, as happened in real life, although maybe not with the destroyer escorts that I make sure they have, but you know, ships could get popped and not even know it. Totally fine, but there's no way to replace those. And that's where it, um, it starts to, to, to fall apart for me from an allied perspective. And in that case, you know, why would you ever have a surface fleet? That's, 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 that's the gist of it. Anyway, guys, um, I think that's going to be it for Atlantic Fleet. Um, like I say, it's a fun little game, but um, the campaign just, there's just something about it that's just like, well, what am I going to do? Because situations rise up that are just unwinnable, un, uncomebackable. That is such a horrible sentence. Anyway, I think I've made my point. I think I'm going to leave that here. So thumbs up if you have enjoyed this. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching and sticking around with the series. I'll see you guys next time.